Hey, welcome back. This is Defender Fabrication. My name's Scott, and today we're going to cut some perforated metal on our JD Squared Mad CNC plasma table. Now you can see that I have already cut a couple pieces out. This is not that difficult, but I thought some people may enjoy some assistance their first time around, so I thought I'd make this video. Now you can see from what I've done here that I've weighted down this sheet of perforated metal. And the reason for that is that this is 10 gauge and it didn't sit flat on the table. And to cut this, we have to turn off the torch height control. So I think you can see there that, that this sheet is springing up. Now, I'm cutting out these crescent shapes and I should be able to get nine of these out of a sheet. And by the way, this um, a sheet of 10 gauge is in the order of 130 bucks, something like that. And this sheet of perforated is uh, $430 is what I paid for it. So um, you can understand why that I don't want to screw any of these up. In addition, um, the company, the, the pieces that I'm making out of these, uh, I'm getting orders for them three at a time. So it would be really convenient if after the third order, I didn't have to order another sheet to make one. So if I screw one of these up, then you know that, uh, that messes up the, uh, the, the, the count. But anyway, what I've done is I've found uh, some weights, um, you know, a sledgehammer, um, uh, a uh, fence for my shear, and some uh, other off-cut pieces over there to try to get this sheet down to the top of the table. That's the first thing that we did. Now, because you, know, you, you cut this with the torch height control off, any differences in the height of the table will, uh, will cause you problems. Um, so one thing that I found on this first piece is that the, there, there are little nubs where you know, previous cuts have left the slats a little bit higher. So from this side of the table to, to, to this side where most of the cuts have happened in the past, um, I see a little difference in height. Now what I did on the first piece that I cut was I actually raised, the torch height control wants to be at 60 thousandths of an inch. Uh, above the sheet and uh, what I did was to compensate because I did a dry run and I'll show you how to do that here in a minute I did a dry run on this first piece and the uh, the torch tip when it got to this side of the piece was starting to touch the sheet so to compensate for that what I did was I raised uh, that torch height to 90 thousandths of an inch on this first piece now on the second piece that I cut I was able to leave it at 60 thousandths and uh, it, it, um, it, it wasn't so bad. Uh, one thing that I did with this crescent shaped piece, and you know, whatever you cut, you're gonna have to keep this in mind as well. Since you are spanning you know, the, almost the whole width of the table with one piece, and any differences in height is gonna cause you problems. You know, if you're cutting a, you know, a small piece, six inches in diameter, you know, you're probably not gonna have a problem with the torch, the torch height. You know, wherever it touches off and comes back up is, is gonna be adequate uh, to cut out that piece. But you know, these pieces are almost four foot wide. So the actual pierce point is closest to the center of the part. Now, you know, I might, what I might have been able to do instead of raising the torch height on this first piece to 90 thousandths of an inch was to actually move that pierce point to the, what I know as the high side of the, uh, of the table and uh, let it go from there. Um, you know, that, that, that's an option as well. Let's go ahead, what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna do a dry run on the third piece, let you take a look at that. And uh, what I do is, th this whole sheet is programmed. And so what I do is, um, I pick this start point being the next pierce point uh, for the next part and, and do a start at point. And well, let, let's just go ahead and let's go do it. So here's the sheet of parts. See if I can't get you a real good look here. Here's the sheet of parts, and this is the next part we're gonna cut, this number three. So I'm gonna zoom in on that. And you can see right here is the pierce point. I'm 
and I'm going to find that point. I'm going to do a point restart. And then you'll notice if we come over here that it says restart at point. Now I've got the torch height control locked out. I'm going to do a dry run. Notice that turns green. The lockout is um, uh, red. Now I'm not sure how that works with the torch. Even if even on a dry run, you're not going to sense any voltage. So I'm assuming that the lockout doesn't have to happen if you're doing a dry run. But anyway, it says restart at point. Okay, so I'm going to reset the camera and then uh, so you'll be able to good, get a good shot of this. And uh, I'll come back over and hit that restart at point when I'm all ready. Now while this thing's running, I think maybe you'll notice that I think that what happened was the torch tip actually lined up on one of these holes and went deeper than the top of the sheet. Now I'll show you in a second how to remedy that. Now these holes in this sheet are, are half inch uh, diameter. So that's gonna lend itself um, to this torch setup. If you have a perforated plate that has bigger holes in it, then now you'll see right there. Yeah, that's what I was looking out for. The uh, the pin hit the uh, hit my sledgehammer, so I'm going to move this sledgehammer back. Still hold it down. I think we'll be all right. But anyway, the the holes in the sheet. If that torch tip lines up right on one of those holes, then it's going to go deeper before it senses the top of the material uh, than it would otherwise. So it looks. Okay, I stopped that. So, um, and it looked to me like the torch was a little bit too low as well. So let's um, let's remedy that. Let me get everything restarted here. Okay, so what I'm going to do on this on this restart is I'm going to lay this piece of really thin sheet metal down and let it touch off on that. Now. If you're inclined to do so, of course, the thickness of this metal is going to raise that torch height, or at least I'm assuming. You know, the reason I'm doing this video is not because I'm an expert at this, uh, because sometimes it's easier to learn off the guy that just did it than it is from the guy who is an expert at it. So, you know, take all this with a grain of salt um, and, and do your due diligence in, um, you know, in, in, in whatever you do. But this is one method I know that JD Squared had um, had mentioned to me, you know, with perforated metal, is that uh, you know because that that torch can dive deeper into the metal, um, that you use another piece of metal to touch off. So let's try that again. Okay, yeah, see that the torch height is, is a little higher now, and I'm sure that you're not going to be able to tell that on camera. But it's probably at a, at a at a little more correct height. Of course, you got to realize too, it's it is higher by the thickness of that material than what it really wants to be. But I'm going to go ahead and let it run through this piece again, just to make sure this other sledgehammer over here is is out of the way before we make this cut. And you know, I'm running this right now at a 10 gauge speed. I could have changed that in the Mad GUI uh, interface to you know uh, 20 gauge or something, and this would actually happen a lot quicker. So you know that's a, that's an option, something to think about if you're doing this. Let's, let's take a look at where that um, at where this trying to pierce at. I'm going to go ahead and drop the uh, the torch head. And just see if that thing didn't didn't line up. Yeah, let's take a let's let, let you get a little closer look here. Well, I guess it looks like maybe maybe the flat part of that um, of that ohmic tip 
is on the flat part of the sheet. So that would have been all right. So you can see there, there's, there's a narrow area where that, if that, if that tip lines up with one of those holes, it could go a little bit deeper. So, hey, let's, um, let's take a stab at this thing. I think, uh, I think it's gonna run. So let's turn, let's turn, we're gonna do a point restart. And we're right there where, where we wanna be on that third part. And you can see over here it says restart at point, but we're not gonna do a dry run. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna let it go. Torch height is locked out. And uh, I'm gonna hit restart at point after I go put the camera over there for you to see. Not sure how it's going to come across on the camera, but uh, the dross is pretty minimal, really. About what I experienced on the rest, kind of clips right off. I'll use a um, a wire brush, a cup wire brush on a um, a four and a half inch uh, angle grinder, and uh, just knock all those edges off. And this is about what I saw on the other three pieces too. So, hey, listen, um, I just want to do this video. To let you see what I ran into and uh, if this is something you're going to tackle in the future um, you know feel free to give me a yell if you got any questions and uh, if not I'll see you on uh, I'll see you in the next video thanks for watching